Tobias Pickers, An American Tragedy, is now playing in its world premiere production at New York's Metropolitan Opera. It was commissioned in 1997 by Met Artistic Director James Levine, who wanted a big American work for the country's premier opera house. But the composer put off writing the work until he finished two other operas, Fantastic Mr. Fox and Therese Riquin. And I learned what worked, what didn't work and what worked. And I learned more about uh, just writing for the voice and writing for the stage. I learned so much. I, I knew nothing, really, when I wrote Emmeline. And now I know everything. <laughs> Picker says Theodore Dreiser's novel about a doomed social climber appealed to him for its ability to hold a mirror up to American society. The book was based on a famous real-life murder trial and had already been successfully adapted into a Broadway play and two movies, most notably A Place in the Sun, starring Montgomery Clift and Elizabeth Taylor. Drawn to realistic psychological works, Picker found operatic possibilities in the central love triangle set within the context of a larger class conflict. I work with the librettists very closely on shaping the librettos so that there are opportunities for arias and ensembles and chorus moments, solos with chorus, so that it's all planned out as a structure. And then I start to write the music. So I started at the beginning and I went to the end. The director of An American Tragedy is Francesca Zambello. She has 22 operatic world premieres to her credit, among them two previous works by Picker. I love working with living composers. We can only speak to the ones of the past in our dreams and to be able to have a conversation, an email, a thought with a living composer makes such a difference because you're able to change a work and shape a work to the singer, to the dramatic situation. Conductor James Conlon says Picker's lyrical opera has a distinctly American soul and follows in the great tradition of composers such as Copland and Barber. It's an accessible musical language uh, and I think that this is not something that is going to put the audience at a distance from itself. This is inviting music. You can listen to it. You can become involved with the story, and you can relate to what you're hearing. Baritone Nathan Gunn plays the working class hero who yearns for all the material fulfillments of the American dream and comes to a bad end, convicted of murdering his pregnant girlfriend. I can't help but feel that he is sort of a sociopath because he goes from scene to scene, seeing from being yeah, scenes with his mother where he's very sincere and devout about his religion to uh, scenes with his girlfriend where he's you know coming on to her after just having left another woman but the way I approach it is he's honest every time Picker wrote the opera with this cast in mind choosing mezzo-soprano Susan Graham to play the rich society girl I think Tobias went to each one of us and said what notes do you like and what notes do you not like? <laughs> and, um, and through that, that process, he's sort of tailor-made these roles to, to fit our particular strengths and, and not emphasize our particular weaknesses. In the past, music lovers expected to hear new works written for specific singers when they went to the opera house. Now, it has become a luxury which adds to the excitement of this production. This buzz, not only is it there because it's a richly collaborative process with a great piece and, and great participants, I said, but look at, look at the cast. We're all in the prime of our lives, perhaps even in the prime of our careers, and that, that, that just gives a wonderful, sexy quality to the entire event, and it's so everything feels very alive. It's been so exhilarating. Premiering a new opera is a colossal undertaking, but the rewards of success are great. Robert Hilferty, Bloomberg. And now